Let's talk about transverse waves. The word transverse means perpendicular. So what on earth could I mean by a transverse wave? Well, when you've got a wave, it's got to move. Remember that that's what waves do. They move of their own volition through a medium. So that takes up one direction. When I call a wave transverse, what I'm saying is that the disturbance that it represents takes place perpendicular to the direction in which it's moving. So we can, for example, consider a chain that we've got tied between two poles. And it's just sitting there, and I decide to hit it, right? So I hit it at one side, and then the disturbance is going to propagate like that, but the chain itself is moving back and forth in this way. So this and this are perpendicular to each other, and that means that that's a transverse wave. All right, so let's just look at an example of a transverse wave. Here we've got one. The equilibrium is the flat line, and the wave is this guy right here. He's moving in this direction, so clearly the disturbance is perpendicular. <gasps> perpendicular. All right, now what I've seen a lot of problems ask along the, uh, this topic is, what direction will these different points move in as the wave propagates? So we could, for example, ask, what's going to happen to point A as the wave moves through? Well, the wave's moving in this direction. The easiest way to do problems like this is to just redraw the wave. So it's moving in that direction. Here we go. That's what it's going to do, right? So where did point A go? It went down. Where did point B go? It went up. Where did point C go? It went up, right? Where did point D go? It went down. So that's really easy to do, but it's not something that you may have thought of doing. All right? So let's go ahead and look at why transverse waves are important. All right. So we've got something called polarization. This comes up a huge amount in studies of light which we're not going to talk about right now, but it is a property of transverse waves. The idea is that we live in three dimensions. Three. The wave motion takes up one of them, so how many are left over to be perpendicular to that? Well, we got two left over. So that means that we have two independent transverse waves. Two of them. These two things are called polarizations. And so you'll often see this in questions about whether or not a wave can be polarized. If it's transverse, it can be polarized. If it's not transverse, it can't be polarized. That's transverse waves.